Good afternoon. My name is Roderick Miller. I'm the chairman of tracingthepast.org, a nonprofit organization located in Berlin, Germany. The topic of today's TEDx is brave new space, and the space that I have in mind is the everyday living environment of today's Europeans, specifically addressing in what ways the Holocaust adage, never forget, relates to, or could relate to, our contemporary sense of space. With the last few remaining eyewitnesses of the Shoah now passing on, is it possible to never forget something that we never personally experienced? Babies are usually, by the age of about five months, able to focus on distant three-dimensional objects. But what do they see? With no concept of a cat or a house or a tree, probably just an abstract jumble of shapes and color. This is most likely, has some effect anyway, on why we have no memory of when we were infants. It's only later, when we evolve the conceptual constructs necessary for the development of memory, as an adult, you tend to notice things because they're new, unusual, or stand out in some way. But what makes you remember or never forget them? Without getting too much into the very complicated neurosciences of it, I think that we can at least agree that memory is formed both from experience, things that happen to us externally, and things that we read about, learn about, in short, our education. On the one hand, you recognize this restaurant because that's where you met your girlfriend. On the other hand, you recognize this house because Beethoven lived there. Now, you didn't actually see Beethoven there, but perhaps you're a classical music fan and you saw a picture in a book of Beethoven's house, and when you saw the actual house, that triggered your memory. Learning things creates memories the same way that experiencing external stimuli creates memories. And furthermore, the memories you have about places alter your perceptions of those places. These things are so basic that we tend to take them for granted. To illustrate my point, 76 years ago, in this wonderful theater, the Volkstheater here in Vienna, a man stood on this stage and exhorted his enthusiastic audience to give three hail victories to the leader who was across the way watching his favorite opera. That man was the Nazi leader of Vienna, and he went on to implement the extermination camps of Majdanek, Treblinka, Sobibor, and Bugetz. I would hope that you're now knowing that this beautiful theater once hosted a man responsible for the deaths of two million human beings would have some effect on your perception of this space today. But then again, what does the Holocaust have to do with us anyway? I first moved to Berlin about 10 years ago, after an absence of nearly 20 years. I had missed the entire period when the Berlin Wall came down, and I think that my perception of space was particularly sensitized by the unusual way that Berlin had changed. 